speaker, Dishing O from Krakow, who will talk about first dynamical, uh, sorry, uh, transition from one to two dimensional dynamics, please. So thanks to the organizers for inviting me to attend the conference. And uh, so it, it's, it is my pleasure to come back to Penn Level to share my work on uh, transitions from one to two dimensional dynamics. So there are, there are many examples in the uh, dynamics showing that uh, the dimension of the system will kind of give a re uh, some restrictions or properties to will, will affect the dynamical behavior of a system. One, one example is in continuous type of uh, di com continuous time dynamical system is the Poincaré Bendixson's theorem. We consider a flow defined on a two dimensional surface. And if the forward orbit of a point is contained in the compact subset, then the omega limit set is either an equilibrium or a periodic orbit or the union of a heteroclinic orbit. So this means that it is, so there is no chaos in two dimensions. However, it is not true for three dimension. So in three dimension, for example, the Lorentz attractor. There are also some, many examples in discrete time dynamical system. Uh, the first example that we are going to talk about is the number of things. In one dimension, uh, Singer proved that the system can have at most finally, finally many things because the number of things is bounded by the number of periodic, of, it's bounded by the number of critical points. However, this is not true in higher dimension because uh, by the work of Newhouse and Robinson, they found maps in two, two dimensions that have infinitely many things. There are also examples in combinatory showing that uh, the dimension can get, affect the, dynamical behavior of a system. Uh, for example, by the work of Lee York, they showed that uh, pure three implies chaos. What does this mean? This, their theorem says that once, if a system has a pure three point, then it can have pure order orbits with any periods. A more de precise description of the creations of pure order orbits is described by the Stakowski theorem. According to the Shaskovsky theorem, if you have a pure order of pure P, say like two times seven, then you will have you will have pure order orbits with any pure lesser than pure uh, two times seven, where the order is defined by the Shaskovsky ordering. And the special case three is the theorem of Lee York. Three implies the existence of, of all other types of period, all other periods of period orbits. In fact, the, the needing theory developed by Miller and Thurston, by using the needing theory, you, you can fully describe all possible itineraries of a system by using, a, by using one needing sequence. If, uh, if there, the system has only one critical points. If the head system has more critical points, then you have to use a needing uh, metric. However, in uh, in dimension, in higher dimension, this is not these these are not true. The first example is that pure three no longer implies chaos. It is easy to find a system in two dimension such that the system has only period one, period two, and period three orbits. One example is, I can show you an example in the handle map. This handle map has two saddle fixed points. And these two cur curves are the stable, stable manifolds of this fixed point. And the other curves here, the blue curves here are the st stable manifolds of the other saddle fixed point. And it also has, a, the system also has a, a period to sync here and here 
the shaded green region is the basin of this thing. And the system also has a saddle, pier three saddle point here, here, here. And the purple curves are the, uh, are the stable manifold. And it has a pier three sink here, here and here and here. And the red region is the basin of this sink. And no, there are no other types of pier other orbit. So this is an example showing that pier three no longer implies a chaos entire dimension. In fact, I will later show that the need, it is possible to find a map arbitrary close to one dimension such that the need, needing theory breaks down. For example, here is, an, here is this is a picture. This is a picture of the parameter, uh, parameter space of the Lozi family. So each curve here represents the creations of periodic orbit. As you see that there are many intersections here, here, here. These, inter these, these intersections means that the order of creations of pure order orbit split. When B compare for, for the case one dimension and higher dimension. So this here, here the order of creation also flips. Flips, flips. I will explain why this happens later. In fact, one leading sequence is enough to uh, the work of Mr. Ravish and Stamic also prove that you will need to use infinitely many leading sequence to fully uh, describe the possible, all possible iteraries of a system. Okay, so the last example is the classification problem. It's the, the, it, is, it is clear that you can use a one parameter family to classify the class of unimodal maps. However, this is not true in higher dimension. Uh, for infinite realizable Hanon-like map, the work of Hazard, Martin, and Tresha show that those, the, that class cannot be classified by a finite a finite parameter family of maps. In fact, in order to solve the classification problem, you will need to use infinite, either infinite parameters or use tree map. So in, our, in, order, to, in order to study what, what it happens when the when this dimension of the system increase from one dimension to two dimension, let us introduce a a prototype map. So now we start from a rectangular domain. And the first step is we squeeze and stretch the rectangular domain and then fold the, uh, fold the, the set. Then it returns to the rectangular domain. So this defines our prototype map. And this is inspired from the unfolding of a homoclean tangency. So there are some typical examples. The first example is the Hanon, like Hanon family, the, the standard, Hanon, uh, the classical Hanon family. So when B is greater than to zero, this is a Hanon map. However, when B equals to zero, this is the, the whole family, the whole behavior degenerates to a unimodal map, one dimensional unimodal map. And another example is the Lozi family, is the piecewise linear version of the Hanon-like map. So when uh, B equal to zero, the whole system degenerates to the one-dimensional test map. So for the two-parameter uh, two family, the parameter A controls the positions of the tip. And the parameter B here controls how much it is squeezed. And when B equal to zero, the system degenerates to one dimension. So what we want to compare is what happens when B increased from zero to a non-zero number. Okay, so in order to study what happened, we introduce a topological model. In this picture, this is a, this, this picture is the example of a Hanon, Hanon map. So we want to define a topological model on the Hanon map. So first we assume 
the system is area contracting. So the, the map will have two fixed points. One set of fixed points here and the other set of fixed points is here. And this is the compo component of the stable manifold of this. So we take the pre so the, the, comp the stable manifold intersects the image here. We take the pre-image, it goes here, then this set is called R infinity, gamma, sorry, gamma infinity. So now we consider the other set of fixed points here. So the, the, stable, the stable manifold intersects the image twice here and here. We take the pre-image of this component. So this would be beta two. And we, again, this stable manifold intersects the image here and here. We take the pre-image of this component. So this component goes here and this component goes here and we continue to take the pre-image of this branch of the, uh, of the handle map. So this becomes beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four and so on. So now we, we let B be the, Define it to be the region be bounded between beta two and beta one, and C be the region bounded between beta one and gamma infinity. Okay, so now let us consider this stable manifold and let the beta one, let, let gamma one equals to beta one. Now we consider the other branch of the Hano map. We take the pre image of the stable manifold on this branch. Here goes to here, this goes to, this goes to here and, and this goes to here and so on. So these stable manifolds are called gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, and so on. So now we can define a partition on C. So let's C two be the region bounded between gamma one and gamma two. C3 be gamma between gamma two, gamma three, and so on. So this, uh, what we did was defining a topological model for a uh, Hanon map. And we can also define a topological model for a uh, whole Z family so similarly. And this is how the topology, this is how the partition looks like on a whole Z map. Okay, so in order, so now we want to study uh, the orbit of C and of, of this partition element. So first we assume that the map is orientational preserving. That means that the determinant of the, Jacob, the Jacobian is greater than zero. So first we apply one entry. So this set goes here, C2 goes here, C3 goes here, C4 goes here and so on. Then we continue to do iteration. Then after n minus one iteration, after n minus one iterations, the set will go inside B. So that these set to be B2, B3, B4, and so on. So this B2, this goes here, this goes here, goes here, this goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here. So these sets are B2, B3, B4, and so on. Okay, so what is the structure of the sets inside B? As you see that, so these sets Bn converges, converges to the unstable manifold of the other fixed point exponentially, and the convergence rate is B. Let's cheat a bit. So Bb is the, assume, let us assume that B is the Jacobian map. So this converges exponentially to the unstable manifold. Let's cheat a, bit, a little bit, assuming that this is also B. So this should be B over lambda, but let us cheat. Say so this is B. Yes. These pieces converges to the unstable manifold at the exponential rate B. And you should think of the middle of these pieces are the critical points of a higher dimension of a Hanon map. Okay, so let us apply one more iterate. So after we do the last iterate, the set, B set returns to C. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and this goes here. And let us see, let us study the structure of the set U. Uh, let's assume that these sets are U2, U3, and so on. So now let us see, study the structure of these, the sets U. 
So because the set B converges to the stable manifold exponentially, these sets U also converges to the unstable manifold exponentially at the rate B. So, the, and we should think of these are the critical values of the of a handle map. Okay, so you you can also define you can also de you define such partition for a lossy map. So those, this is how it looked like on a lossy map. So for we can, so we just consider the orientation conserve a uh, preserving case. So we can also co consider the orientation uh, reversing uh, case. So the whole picture is kind of similar. After n iterates, the set will, the orbit will land inside B. Then after one more iterates, it will land inside C. It will return to C. However, the only difference is that inside B, the set B goes upward, goes up and down, up and down, uh, above and below, and above and below the unstable manifold. Alternatively. And this is also similar to the uh, to the critical point uh, to to the critical uh, values u n so u two here is here u three u four u five okay so then how do we study the dynamics of the system by using the partition and its iter so we consider when the critical value is small, when when u n when the tip here is small, then the set c n and u n disjoint. So we have nothing. So it is not interesting. But when the critical value is large, when u n here is large, the the map is map c n is map here. So here you will get a full horseshoe. So the uh, the maximum invariant subset containing inside CN is conjugate to a, sub, a full ship with two full ship uh, with two two alphabets. So this gives you a full horseshoe. And when the critical value is somewhere between here, then you will see that you you can get a prototype map again. This is a rectangle domain map that maps to a fold. So we can apply the tools of renormalization, then the story will repeat again and again. So this we call we call this, but uh, we call this to be renormalization defined by one returns to C. So for by using the what well, we just by using the picture here, renormalization defined by re one returns to C. We see that for each critical values, we can control one dynamical property fully. That means that now we have infinitely many critical values. And if we can perturb these pieces independently, then this gives another explanation of why a class, the class of Hanon like family cannot be classified by a finite parameter family. Because if you can part, uh, perturb these pieces independently, then you can create infinitely dynamical properties that you want. Okay, so let us go back to a uh, two parameter family. So for two parameter families, these critical values are depends on two variables, A and B. So the critical value forms a rank two system. So that means that we are able to fully control two dynamical properties by using two, uh, two variables. So let me give you an example. The first example is how to control two critical values to control, to create a map that has two C. Let me show you some pictures, explain how to, how to how this creates. Okay, so now we start from a uh, unimodal map. Unimodal map B equals to zero. And this is how the unimodal map looks like. And it has two pure, pure order two points here and here, here and here. So the first step is we measure how long it is from the midpoint of C2 to C3. So then is the length is here. This is the length from the midpoint of C2 to C3. So now we increase B.
So we increase B. So now B here, the length from U2 to U3 is equals to the mid length from the midpoint here to the midpoint here. So now, then what is the next step? We had adjust B. So now we have to adjust A, increase A, such that this moves to the midpoint of C2 and this moves to the midpoint of C3. So after, after when this is large, when this moves to the midpoint of C3, then you will also get a critical, you will get a sink of pure three. Here, here, here. This is how you use two critical values to create two sinks. So for a short answer of why a higher dimensional family can have infinitely many sinks, but a final can, uh, but for one dimensional fam family cannot, can only have five many sinks is because a five infinite dimension, uh, for a two dimensional map can have infinitely many critical points and infinitely many, many critical values. So by using those critical values, you can find a map in two dimension that has infinite many C. So let's move back to our slide. So let me, let me try to explain what we had just did. So, the, so we had applied the realization to create a peer two and peer three sync. And this is, this, these are the parameters where the map is pure dominantly realizable. These are the parameters where the maps are they appear in triple room light bulb. Okay. The parameters that are triple the room bulb moves to the right by the rate B. And for the triple room bulb maps, for the parameters move to the right by B squared. And inside the pure two and pure three realization both maps, you can find the parameters that are pure two, that has pure two things. And these are the parameters that have pure three things. And the intersection is, are the parameters where you have coexistence of pure two and pure three, three things. And this regions where you have coexistence of two things is where the length from U2 to U3 equals to the length from the midpoint of C2 to C3. And here is when the length is smaller, and here is when the length is greater. So let us move back to, to pure doubling and pure, the parameters with pure doubling and pure tripling realizable map. Because we apply the realization, so we can, apply, we, we can repeat the whole procedure. We can also find parameters that are pure, pure, uh, pure for realizable here. And if we repeat the procedure and the procedure, proceed, the procedure again, you will be able to, the intersections will form the parameters such that the maps are pure and doubling, infinitely, infinitely pure doubling realizable. We can do a similar thing to pure tripling map. So, Inside the parameters with pure trembling maps, you can find parameters that are pure dominant realizable. Then we can repeat the whole procedures again. So the, whole, the intersections will be parameters such that it is infinitely realizable with a type three times two infinity. So by the work of Kalvo, Lubish, and Martins, they proved that when B is small, the the uh, the infinite the infinite pure doubling sub, realizable maps are the boundary of zero entropy. And for surface diffeomorphisms, Kosefer, Pujols, and Tresher proved that the boundary of zero entropies are exactly infinite realizable maps of the type. P times two infinity. So now we can ask some ask some questions. So we uh, when B is large, will these will these parameters also be curves 
in the parameter family. So the question two, does these two curve really intersect somewhere here? And is, is the intersection unique? And as we can see, if the, there is an intersection, does it mean that the boundary of zero entropy changed from here to here as B increased from zero to infinity, but from zero to one? Okay, so let us move on to other applications. So in order, or other to, in order to give you some other more applications, we introduce a sub partitions of CM. So let me define a subtortion of CM by using an example, C3. We saw it from uh, set C3 here. So after three iterates, the, set, the orbit returns to C. This goes here and this goes here and returns to C. Okay, so we see that U2 and, yeah, sorry, U3 and C2 has, uh, intersects and the intersection and C2 splits the intersection into two components here and here. So we take the preimage. So this means that there is a set, there is a subset in C3 such that it is mapped to the blue component. And there is a subset in C that is mapped into this component. So. Let C32 to be the preimage of the intersections to here. Okay. Uh, by a similar method, uh, similarly, we can also define sub C32, C34. So we see that the image also intersects C3. So you can also define C33, C33 here. And the U3 also intersects uh, C4. So, but the on intersection only contains one component. So this component is over here. And this is how the sub partition of C3 looks like. So you have C32, C33, C34, C33, and C22 here. This is the sub partition. You can also define a sub partition of C2 by a similar method. So as you can see that the image intersect C2 splits the image into two components here and here. So you will have C22, C22 here, this and this. And the image, in, the image intersects C3 only one time. So you have C23 here. This is the component C. Two, three. So this is the sub partition of C2. And you can also define the sub partition for C3, 4, and others. This is how it looks. Okay, so now let us study the how the orbit of the sub partition. Okay, so we, there are two, CMN has two components, the left component and the right component. Let's consider the left component for its convenience. So after M iterates, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, it returns to C. And this is a subset of C. Then we can, so this is the first return. So this returns to, this is the first return to C. And we apply the iteration, N iterations again. So the, this maps here and this maps here. In this example, this is two iterations. So the second iteration, this returns to C again. This is the second return. So let the second return to be the set U L M N, and it is a subset of U N. Then how do we study use the subpartition to study the dynamics of the system? So again, we repeat the whole procedure. So when the critical value here, this is small, then this piece and this piece does not intersect. So this, so we don't have anything. And when the critical value is large, then you see that you can create the full horseshoe 
because this is map here. So you get a full horseshoe by this map, by the map Fn plus n. But when the critical value is somewhere between here and here, is somewhere here in the middle, then you get a prototype map again. So you can apply the tools of randomized transition as the story will repeat this again. And this is called the randomization defined by two returns to C. So, okay, so the, the second example is that we want to find a, same, a map with infinitely many things. Okay, so we, this is so inspired from the work of Newhouse and Robinson. We start from a map that has a homoclean tangency. This is the unstable manifold that has a intersection with, tangential intersection with a stable manifold. Okay, so, so there are many types of homogeneity tangency that is considered this in the parameter space. So the, and let us draw the partition and the folding, the critical, the critical values here. So because uh, the, these, the, the unstable manifold and the stable manifold has a tangential intersection, and the sets U converges to the unstable manifold exponentially, and the pieces CN also converges to the stable manifold exponentially, we can apply a coordinate change, a log coordinate change. So apply a coordinate change on the XX. So this is delta X, is the coordinate change is mapped from delta X to negative log delta X with the base of lambda. So what do we see here? Because these scales, these the sets, the partition C's converges to the same, this bar gamma infinity exponentially, and the convergence, and this is one over lambda, one over one over lambda, one over lambda square, one over lambda cube, and so on. So you, these stable manifolds are located on the integer coordinates of the of the new core of our coordinate. One, two, three, and so on. Okay, and what about this? Is what happens when we apply the coordinate change on CN? Then what happens when we uh, apply the coordinate change to UN? So here, these pieces converges to the stable manifold exponentially by the rate of B. So after under the coordinate change, this becomes log B inverse two log B inverse, three log B inverse, and so on. Okay, so the, the proof, um, the proof of uh, Newhouse and Rob, what they, uh, Robinson, what they did is that they apply a perturbation to, of the map transversal to the curve of homoclean tenures. But instead, now we try to perturb the parameters along the curves of homoclean tangency. So th let's go back to the, ch the change of co the new coordinate system. So let us consider U2. So we, under the coordinate change, we know that this quantity goes to infinity as B goes to zero. This means that it is easy to find a sink by using in the realization that returns to C, that, retur that returns that returns to C two times. So now we get the first thing. This is easy to get the first thing. Then how do we get the second thing? We consider another, we consider UN for some N. So in our new coordinates, where it is, it is, n minus one log b inverse. Okay, so let's go back to the first first thing. So the first thing is structurally stable. That means that we can perturb this a little bit and this, this thing still exists. So let's perturb this by delta u. However, what happens when we what happens to this when we, we perturb delta u? 
when we perturb delta u here, here this is n minus one log b inverse. So the perturbations here will be n minus one delta u. So what does it mean when n becomes very large? The perturbation here will be very large. So we assume that n is very large such that this quantity is greater than two. So if this quantity is greater than two, then this includes two integer numbers here and here. If it includes two integer numbers here, that means that it contains a full, sub a partition, a full partition element, CM2. Then we can, we can apply the realization by two returns to C again and create the second C. So what is the key point here? The key point here is that as N goes to infinity, the speed of how these critical values move also increase and also goes to infinity. And by using this, we will be able to repeat the whole argument again and again and create infinite. And so that the final map will have things, uh, will have infinitely many things. Okay, so, and this constructs a map with infinitely many things by using a new, new proof. And because uh, you can see that the construction only depends on perturbing the parameter B, and if you add more parameters to our system that this only, the whole argument depends on, only on B. So this gives another explanation of the why a new house, the new house parameters form the co dimension to dimension, which, which is first proved by Benedict Martins and Paul Mizal. Let me go over the, start the third example. So how do we use these to pr prove that the need, a needing theory breaks down the entire dimension? So let me state the theorem. So for all k greater than zero here, there is this some, some b bar, the bound, the bound for b, and two curves, such that for each curves inside these curves, there are there is this a period a pair of period, a pair of periodic point which depends continuously on the parameters a b inside this region bounded by this curve and the boundary is exactly where the pair of period other orbits are created and this and we can also get that these two curves intersect. Uh, the intersection is transversal loop. As you can see that B, when B equals to zero, this, the whole system reduces to one tangential case. And when B bar is greater than zero, the whole order of creation will flip. So this gives a counter example in higher dimension, uh, in two dimensions saying that the needing theory breaks down in higher dimension. Okay, so let us uh, consider, okay, so, so we can, oh, sorry, uh, I, I have to mention that this is the, this is, now we are considering the Lozy family. So this, these are, these, this is the parameter space for Lozy family. Okay, so let us consider the parameter space. Again, let us consider the parameter curves such that the, such that the, Unstable manifold and a stable manifold has a homoclinic inter intersection. And these are the parameters such that it has homoclinic tangents. And under this curve is where the topological model is. It's, it's where the uh, partition exists. And we, uh, again, apply the log coordinates to the twofold, to U2 and U3. And as we can see that the distance from the critical value here to the critical value here is log b inverse because this is log b inverse this is two log b inverse so the distance from here to here is log b inverse so when b is small enough 
this becomes very the log the distance from here to here becomes very large as b, b decreases. So we can assume that b bar is a value small enough such that this is greater than zero. Because this is greater than two, and we consider the case when b equals to b bar. So when this when b is small enough, this means that the distance from here to here is very large, and it contains two integer values. This value, this m minus one and m. So that means that it contains a full a, a full partition element CF. Okay, so okay, so because it contains a full part a partition element, we can consider the renormalization defined by two returns to C. So there are two components. One is C M two. This is C M three. Let us let us focus first. Focus on the and let's go back to the parameter space. We are located on the intersection B bar and the curve of homogeneous tangency. So now this is our parameter, the parameter for this map. So let us first focus on the map that maps here to here. So the map maps here to to here. So here to here, you can see that you get a full horseshoe. So that means that here you already have a periodic or orbit of pure M plus three. So the creation of periodic orbit occurs, occurs somewhere before the homoclean tendency here, because you already have a full horseshoe. So the create, you know, the creation happens when you try to reduce the when you try to reduce the prime uh, critical value. So let us look at the other map, the map that maps M to C, CM2 maps to this curve. So we have a disjoint intersection. So that means that here, this is our parameter, current parameter. So we have to increase A to make this intersect. So the creations of periodic orbit occurs here. So let us go, let us, okay. So we were at B bar. So let's go to the one dimensional case. This that B equals to zero. So then what happens when B equals to zero? When B equals to zero, the sets you, you and degenerates to a single curve. So what happens when B, when A is small, we have no intersection. So we have no periodic or orbits. But when you increase A, you will first get a Full horseshoe by this map. This is map here. So the creation, so full first, you will get the creation of CMN2. And this maps here. So this is disjoint. So you don't have a pure order orbit with C of the type CM3. Then you increase A again. So then you will get the full horseshoe. That means that the creation of CM3 period orbit occurs here. So after doing some work, you'll figure out that the, the parameter such that the period create is a is the curve that connects here to here, and the parameters that create period orbits in CM3 is a curve from here to here. And these, then the, the intersection is transversal. Okay, so now let us try to give a picture of what it looks in the, where, when, when these bifurcation looks in the low Z family. So these are, these curves are exactly the parameters where the bifurcation occurs when the parameter, when the periodic orbits create. So at the beginning, you, you see that this is kind of a mess. So let us draw some of the, let us pick some of the curves and draw it. So this is the curve which we fix the U, CM2, you fix the N and draw all the Ms. And you can see that these curves are kind of parallel. As you see that here, you don't have intersection, you can see that some order of creation still preserves. 
in higher dimension. However, now is so now you fix the value n and change the value n and plot the of the bifurcation, the curves of bifurcation, you will start see the crossing occurs in, in these parameters. So so the so here you, you kind of see that there are some crossing, but it's not clear. So let us apply a coordinate change set such that this this curve becomes a vertical line, and you see that there are some clear intersections here and here. So this means that the linear sequence breaks down. You get a reverse creation here and here compared to b equal to zero. And you can see a similar if for you can see similar for other m. So what what did what did our, what, what did we did on in our theorem, we we in our theorem we collect C U we collect U two and U three, we prove that these intersections goes to zero it goes to zero that means that we can find maps everywhere to zero such that the order of creation re reverses. So do I have any time? Okay, so I still have one application that you can also use the similar topological model to explain, uh, to explain there are no Fibonacci maps in the higher dimension, but I don't think I have enough time. So if someone is interested, I will be happy to discuss it after the talk. So this is, uh, this is all my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, question, remarks, comments? So we have more time, three minutes more. Maybe remote questions? Sir? Maybe there are some questions on the chat. Raise hand. Piotr, do you see something? Okay, so, ah, sorry, it's a question, sorry. Uh, yes, just to be sure, um, um, infinite many things can then all still only happen uh, on a level, uh, measure zero set or? Sorry, can you say it again? The infinite many things now and, and, and that you constructed is just on a Lebesgue measure zero set in the parameter space, or? You mean the infinite infin many yes. things? Yes. Are constructed on? Yes. Yeah, I, I was considering the parameter curves. So, uh, such that it has a common clean tangency. Yeah, the, the, those things are created on that parameter curve. Okay, thanks. More questions, comments, remarks? If no, thanks the speaker again. And we have approached the lunchtime. <laughs>